Hello everyone, welcome. My name is Kweku. I am a pharmacist. In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the medication Rosuvastatin, which is also marketed under the brand name Cresto. We're going to be taking a look at what it is, what it is used for, the recommended dosing, some side effects, drug interactions, as well as some best practices and precautions that you should be aware of if you are taking Cresto. So for starters, what is Rosuvastatin? A Rosuvastatin belongs to a class of medications called statins. Statins are also sometimes referred to as HMG-CoA reductase inhibitors. This is because they inhibit an enzyme, HMG-CoA reductase, which plays a very significant role in the body's production of cholesterol. As you're already probably aware, high cholesterol levels in people arise from two primary sources, from diet and also from what the body actually produces. So in its action, rosuvastatin or Crestor blocks this enzyme HMG-CoA reductase and in so doing, it prevents the body from actually producing or synthesizing more cholesterol, leading to low levels of circulating cholesterol in the blood. When it comes to uses, the obvious one is to bring down elevated cholesterol in people who have high levels of it. And this could either be LDLs or what we call low-density lipoproteins or bad cholesterol and also triglycerides. Rosuvastatin may also be used to reduce the risk of a heart attack or stroke and to decrease the risk that heart surgery may be needed in people who already have heart disease or who are at the risk of developing heart disease. Familial hypercholesterolemia is another condition for which rosuvastatin may be used. Now, this is a condition in which people, including children, are not able to clear cholesterol or other fatty substances from their blood and they may be given rosuvastatin to take care of this condition. It is worth noting that children between 7 and 17 years are approved to use rosuvastatin for this purpose. With respect to dosing, rosuvastatin comes in 5, 10, 20, and 40 milligram tablets. And the usual dose range is between 5 and 40 milligrams daily. The dose is typically taken once a day at the same time with or without food. There is a 40 milligram dose, but that is typically reserved for patients who have not reached their LDL goals while taking the 20 milligrams. In other words, if they've been taking the 20 milligrams for some time, but their levels haven't come down to appreciable levels, the doctor may bump it up to 40 milligrams to see if that helps. With respect to side effects, rosuvastatin is generally well tolerated, at least compared to some other statins. However, abdominal pain occurring in about 2.4%, nausea, myalgia, which basically is muscle pain, and occurs between 1.9 and 12.7% of the population. Now, myalgia is one of the most characteristic side effects of all statins, and it tends to be the number one reason why a lot of people are not able to tolerate statins. Other side effects include headache, memory loss or forgetfulness, and confusion in some people. Just wanted to put in a quick reminder that not everybody is going to experience any or all of these side effects. So if you're already taking rosuvastatin without any issues, then there shouldn't be any reason for concern. Just keep taking your medication as prescribed. Now, the next set of side effects are the potentially serious ones. Good thing is that those ones also tend to be very rare, typically in the 1% or less range. And these include elevated liver enzymes or liver failure. Sometimes they may be a tendon rupture, a renal failure. And that renal failure may sometimes be attributed to a condition called rhabdomyolysis. Now, rhabdomyolysis is a rare situation in which there is a breakdown of muscle tissue. Now, this may result in the release of certain proteins into the blood, which may be damaging to the kidneys. Rhabdomyolysis is very rare and tends to be dose dependent. That means that the higher your dose, the higher your risk of developing it. Now, onto some drug interactions. And the first one on the list is gemfibrozole which may also be given to take care of triglycerides. If possible, this combination should be avoided, but where the two must of necessity be taken together, then the general recommendation is to limit the rosuvastatin dose to 10 milligrams once a day. Other cholesterol-lowering medications like what we call fibrates, typical example is phenofibrate or niacin, have also been known to increase the risk of developing side effects if taken concurrently with rosuvastatin. Now, this doesn't mean that this combination can never be taken together because in reality, I have dispensed countless prescriptions to people taking both of these medications concurrently. It just lets you know that there is an increased risk for developing side effects so that you can be on the lookout. Another potential drug interaction is with anticoagulants or blood thinners like Coumadin. What happens when Coumadin is taken with rosuvastatin is that it tends to prolong the INR and prolongation of the INR may imply that it will take longer for your blood to clot. That means that it makes you more prone to bleeding. 
As a result, monitoring is highly recommended when you start crossover statin or when there is a dose change. Some antiviral medications or HIV medications, for example, Caletra, have been also known to increase rosuva starting exposure, same scenario, increasing your risk of developing side effects, as well as cyclosporin. Now with cyclosporin, the general recommendation is that if it's going to be taken in combination or concurrently with rosuva statin, then the dose of rosuva statin should be limited to 5 mg once daily. Now onto some precautions and some best practices. The first thing is that it is best practice to report promptly to your doctor if you experience any kind of skeletal muscle effects, especially if it is accompanied by malaise or fever, or if the symptoms persist even after discontinuing the rosuvastatin. The second precaution or best practice is to avoid taking more than two doses within 12 hours of each other. So ideally is one every day at the same time every day. Rosuvastatin may also be harmful to the fetus. So if you are a woman of childbearing age, and you plan on getting pregnant, please sure to let your doctor know for an alternative to be found for you. If you find yourself on Crestor or Rosuvastatin, then the best practice is to use some effective means of contraception during your Rosuvastatin therapy and also to report any known or suspected pregnancy to your doctor. Also, it is best practice to monitor your blood sugar or your A1C if you are diabetic or if you are pre-diabetic, once you start rosuvastatin, rosuvastatin has been known to increase A1Cs in some people and therefore not a bad idea, especially when you start or when you increase the dose. It is also best practice to separate aluminum and magnesium containing antacids from rosuvastatin by about two hours. This is because these antacids may impair the absorption of rosuvastatin. So best practice separated by at least two hours. So high level overview of rosuvastatin. I hope you found some value in it. If you did, please do well to give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do well to do so. And I'll catch you on the next video. Thank you.